Hello, I'm Staff Sergeant Wilkins with the 3rd U.S. Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard. Today, I'm going to give you a class on how to build a metals rack. During this video, refer to the Old Guard Soldier Handbook, page 70 through 78. It's in the very back towards the very end. Inside here is step-by-step -step instructions of how to build a metals rack. Utilize this book while watching this video. Now I'm going to talk about the items you're going to need to do this task. So on the table here, we have some metal backing. This is the big sheet version that you can use. There's another version which I personally prefer to use, and that's this one right here. This is just a sign from your local hardware store, but this one has adhesive already on the back of it. So it makes it a little easier when in building your metals rack. If you choose to not use the one that already has adhesive, you're going to use this sign that doesn't have adhesive on it. So there's two different methods for using adhesive on this sign, and I'll cover it again when I get to that part, but I want to talk about it a little bit now. You can use glue sticks with permanent glue. These don't work as effectively as the other option, which is aerosol cans that are like a spray adhesive. You can buy those at your local hardware store as well. Uh, those, work, those tend to work a little bit better. The much easier item to use for this process is this sign right here. It already has adhesive on the back. You just peel this off and it's already sticky, there's already adhesive. Your issued metals. For here, for the purposes of this, we're going to build a, a two metal ribbon rack. So we have our Global Wear on Terrorism and our National Events Service Medal. Whenever you lay these items out, go ahead and lay them out in the correct order that they're going to be worn, in order of precedence. So you can use the internet and search, and there's websites out there that will provide this information for you, or you can ask one of your battle buddies. When you lay your ribbons out, make sure you lay them out flat. If you have extra ribbon material, keep it stored in a flat container away from moisture. If you look closely, you can see that there's a shiny side and a non-shiny side. The shiny side will have a V-like shape in it. You want to use this side as the outside side. I'll explain that again when I get to that part. If you're only doing a two rack, you're going to need one of these. You should be issued this. If you have a three rack, then you have a three bar. There's two metal strips here. They're an eighth of an inch in width and about an inch and a half in length. You need one of these strips for every metal that you have. Another alternative that you can use if you have it, these are carter pins that hold the buttons on your uniforms. So if you have extra of these, or you can get them from somewhere, these also work. For the backing on your metals, you're going to need balsa wood. You should be provided this. There are different thicknesses for the different rows that you may have if you have six or nine metals. I'll go in more into depth later on. A quality pair of scissors is highly recommended for doing this. The reason for that is when you go to cut the ribbons with scissors, if you have scissors that are not high in quality, it can tear the ribbons. So if you look at the bottom here, you can see how there's a little bit of fraying right here on the end and this shiny string is hanging out. If you have cheap scissors that don't cut very well, what will happen is when you cut this ribbon, you're going to tear it instead of cut it and that will cause you a lot of problems later on. You're going to need to have markers, permanent markers, that match the colors of your ribbons. So, for example, this one's on one edge and this one's on another edge. This one is blue, or this one is red, this one is blue. On the edge, you're going to be coloring on your backing and on this balsa wood. I'll go into more into depth later. Another item you're going to need is a very good razor blade or you can get a hobby knife. If you go get a hobby knife, it looks kind of like a pin and it has a small razor blade on the end. It's very precise and way better to use when doing this. You're going to need a micrometer as well, a permanent marker. This is not needed. This is just so I can show you on the video. And a hot glue gun. When finding an area to make a metals rack, please ensure that whatever surface you're using doesn't have anything on it that can get on your ribbons. So make sure there's no stains, there's no moisture, try not to have drinks near anything. 
Make sure the surface is clean. Clean it before you begin. During this process, you're going to be moving the metals rack around a lot of different angles. And you don't want to get anything on your ribbons in this process, or you're just going to have to repeat it all over again. Now, to make things simpler for you, I'm going to go into depth on the micrometer. I'm going to explain the measurements and explain what ticks are. You will hear ticks as a reference to a measurement that we use on micrometers. On the micrometer, one side is 30 seconds of an inch, and the other is 60 fourths of an inch. Now, I'm going to show you a close up. Micrometers are a six inch ruler. The big bold numbers, this is one inch, two inches, and three inches. This top side, where you see less tick marks, this is the 32nd side. Most micrometers will identify this with the number 32 right here. To explain what a tick mark is, for example, the 4, the 8, the 12, the 16, the 20, and so on, those are all tick marks. The same thing goes for inside. So this first dash right here after the edge of the micrometer, this is one tick, the next one is two ticks, the next one is three ticks, and then you get to the four tick mark. So whenever I'm referring to tick marks, for example, one inch and 18 tick marks would be right here. That is what I'm referring to. Now I'm gonna talk about how to cut out your backings. First, I'm gonna explain how to cut out this backing without using a cutting board. So all you need to do is take your micrometer and measure one and five eighths of an inch or one and 20 ticks. I'm gonna show you that now in a close up. So now I've taken my sheet and laid it on the table like so. I plan on making my cut like this. So what I'm gonna do is take my micrometer and place it on this side and measure with it. So if you've heard the term burn an inch, what that refers to is instead of using my micrometer to place it flush with the edge like this, I'm gonna go ahead and slide it an inch this way. So don't overthink this. So essentially two becomes one because I've lost an inch of measurement here. So now I need to make my measurement. There's a couple ways you can do that. You can use a super fine marker like this or you can scribe the metal with a razor blade. The measurement I'm gonna make here is gonna be one inch and 20 tick marks, or one and five eighths. Just like that. I'm gonna repeat the process on the other side. Now, on this side, you can see that the numbers are larger than on this side. That's because this side is 64ths of an inch and this side is 32nds of an inch. So instead of the 2 and 20, it will be 2 and 40 tick marks. Remember I burned an inch over here, so the 2 is really a 1 right now. I did this to be more precise in my measuring. So where my mark needs to be is at 1 inch and 5 eighths, which on this setup will be at 2 and 40 ticks. So now I'm going to talk about how to find the width of your ribbons and how you need to place those measurements on here. So I have my ribbons in the order of precedence. This is the top and this is the bottom. So I'm going to write a T up here if I can. This is the farthest edge, so I'm going to take my ribbon and lay it on here like this. I'm going to place it flush with the edge of the sheet of metal. Now, I can see where my next ribbon should go would be here. So I can make a mark this way. Another method of doing this is you can lay the ribbon flat and measure with a micrometer from edge to edge. You can also burn an inch to do this just like this, or you can just measure to the edge like this. I prefer this method. So we're at one inch and 14 ticks in width. So now that I have that information, I can come over here and measure one and 14 ticks. 
I can measure either direction. You can do this this way and make your mark. Now I need to do it down here. You may have to rotate the sheet of metal so that you can find a better angle to make your mark from. So now, my first ribbon, here's the width of it. This is the top and this is the bottom, and here's the width of it. I'm going to double check, placing it on here, and there's my marks, right in line with it. Next, I'm going to check this ribbon. Not all ribbons are the same width. This one is also 1 and 14. So from the marks that I made before, I'm going to measure from there. Like I said, I'm using the burn an inch technique. The reason for that is it's a little bit more precise. You don't have to guess with this edge right here. Now, I have my second ribbon marked out. Let's check it. Make sure that there's no gaps on the sides. Make sure your marks are correct. You can place both of them on there and check again. Looks good. Now, I need to make a cut from here to here and from here to here. If you don't have a cutting board, all you need to do is use a razor blade or a hobby knife or whatever you have available. This part can be difficult. I'm going to show you a few techniques. You can do it freehand if you like. Freehand, place the razor blade on the line and take your time and lightly without a lot of pressure, follow the line all the way down. I have almost no pressure on this razor blade. Now, the other technique, see I didn't draw a line here, the other technique is Place a micrometer on your mark points, like so. Now, I'm going to ensure that this micrometer is not going to move. I'm going to put a lot of pressure on it with my fingers. Hold it in place. I'm going to take my razor knife and lightly drag it along the edge. Take your time when doing this. Try not to go quick. I'm just going to drag it again and again and again. You can see the line where I made the scribe. It's easier to follow. Once you see it in the light, you probably can't see it on the video. You can continue to use the micrometer to try to help guide you, but for me, I'm going to place the razor blade back in that groove and continue to make the same cut again and again. Repeat this process to cut it. You can use scissors if you have scissors that are good enough or shears, metal shears to cut with. But when you cut like that, it can roll the metal and bend it. So, or you may not cut straight. Angles on the bottom of your ribbons. 
Now we have our piece that's cut out. The next step you want to do is find the middle or in between each ribbon that you have. You can have a two rack, a three rack, or four rack. So I'm going to draw a line down the middle just like so where I made my marks. So one ribbon's here and one ribbon's here. You can also use a razor blade. I prefer using a razor blade. It's a little bit more precise. I'm just going to make a light scribe right down the middle. This is so I can have a more precise measurement. So now what we want to do, we've made our mark down the middle. Like I said, I prefer to use a razor blade to do this. So this is the top of our metals rack, and this is the bottom. On the bottom, you have to have cuts, angled cuts on the sides. So how you get those cuts is you measure 13 ticks or 13 sixteenths. I'm going to do this side first. So I'm going to burn an inch like I showed before. I prefer to use that method of measurement. So now, what I want to do is line the one up on this edge, come down, and find the 13 tick mark. I want to make a mark right here. Now, I want to make the same mark again. So, what I did here is I put the 13 tick mark at the edge, and now my one inch is up here. I take my time and line everything up. So to get 13 ticks or 13 sixteenths from the one to the corner, I just make the mark here. Now I have my two marks. So from this edge to here is 13 ticks, and from this edge to here is 13 ticks. What I'm going to do is find the closest distance on to this corner, drawing a line from here to here. So when you do this, take your time and make sure you don't have your micrometer too far away. You want to get as close to the edges of the sheet metal on both sides. I can also make all these marks with a razor blade. So now I've made a light scribe using this. I want to come back and look closely and ensure that my lines are straight and they go exactly to the edge here and exactly to the edge here. In the middle, you line the one up with the line you made in the middle or the scribe and repeat the process. Find 13 ticks, make a mark. Now over here I can slide it down and put the middle line or scribe that I made on the 13 tick mark and then make my mark on the one inch mark. Now, I have to find 13 ticks in the middle. Just repeat the same process line your micrometer up with your scribe or line you made in the middle. Put the 13 tick mark on your edge down here that runs this way. Come up and make a mark on the one inch. Now, here I have a little intersection where I have a line coming from the top to the bottom and I have my 13 tick mark line here. Just like on this corner, you want to make your marks as closest to the edges as possible. So imagine this side's not even here. This is your ribbon. This is your metal on this side. So this would be the edge right where it intersects with the lines, and then this would be my edge down here. I'm going to take my time, make my mark, come back, check it. Looks good. Same thing on this side. Looks good. Repeat the same process on this corner that you did over here. 
Now that you have all of your marks, go back with your micrometer and double check them before you make any cuts. So instead of using the marks that I made, the first initial marks that I made, I'm going to look at the line I made that I'm going to make my cut on and I'm going to measure from that line, it's right where it meets the edge, and go all the way out and ensure that I'm at 13 ticks. Now, I can use my razor blade and cut off the corners. When you're cutting with the razor blade, take your time and scribe, scribe, scribe. Just keep making scribe marks. Once you've cut through the metal enough, you can gently press on this corner and it'll start to fold back and then you can just break it off. If you have any issues, like in the middle right here, or you need to take a little bit off, you can just use a razor blade and touch it up. Now that you have this, we need to color the sides. So remember, this is the back, this is the front. So I'm going to have blue here and red here. Now you have two different color ribbons in the middle. So in the middle, it's recommended to pick the darker of the two colors. So on this edge, I'm going to have red. In the middle, I'm going to have blue. And on this edge, I'm going to have blue. Now we're going to move on and show you how to apply the balsa wood to the back of your metals rack. So now, on the back of your metals rack, just flip it over, take your balsa wood, and find out where you need to cut it off. You want it to be flush with the edge of the metal. You can also check it this way by holding it like this. So you see how I didn't use a marker to color this because we're going to have to use the red and blue markers on the sides of this when we're done. I can use this razor blade to just push straight through, but what tends to happen is it will break the balsa wood or it will chip away chunks of it and it won't look right. So you want to take your time and make your cuts. Now that I've cut the balsa wood, you can see it's a nice even cut. If you try to rush this part or you try to use scissors or you try to just chop it, what will happen is, is it will break off uneven like this or it will have a rough edge or you'll even chip chunks out of it and it won't have that clean flush edge like this. So now we're going to flip our metals rack over and on the back we want to set the balsa wood at the top. You want it to be nice and flush with the top and the sides. It's very important that on the top it doesn't dip down. You don't want to have a dip like this and you don't want to have it sticking over the top as well like that. You want it flush with the edge. So take your super glue, preferably gel super glue, and just simply apply some of it to the back. You don't need a lot, just make a nice little thin line and make sure it's carefully placed so you get it nice on the edge, flush with the top and the sides. Once you have it placed, just apply some pressure 
to work out any air bubbles. And everything should be nice and flush. I like to apply pressure anytime I'm gluing something for about roughly count to 10, count to 15, something like that. You know, 1,000, 2,000. Once you're done, this is what it should look like. Now, I have to color the sides. So make sure you reference the front where you made your color before. This one's red. So on here, this wood will absorb the ink. So you don't want to just hold it on there forever. You want to just kind of color it on like this. If you go and hold it in place, what will happen is it will turn dark, almost like black. So just like that. The rougher the cut you make, the harder it is to color in as well. So on this side, the cut is a little bit rougher. If it's rough cut also, it's hard to get in there and color in the wood. So make sure when you cut your balsa wood to cut it smooth as you can. So now we're going to move on and apply the ribbon. So when doing this, I like to lay it out. You can lay it out above it if you want, like this. Make sure you have the shiny side facing out. If you look closely, there will be a V-like shape. The V's should go like this, should go up, okay? So on this side, we have the red one, and on this side, we have the blue one. This is where the glue stick or the aerosol can adhesive spray is used to apply it to the front. If you use the backing that I showed you in the beginning of this video, that one already has the adhesive on it. It's a little bit easier to use, but that adhesive is very aggressive. I recommend you practice building metals racks, just like in this video here, before moving on to using something like that. Take your time during this process. Try to keep your hands as clean as you can. If you have to stop and go wash your hands with soap and water to prevent any glue or super glue from getting on your ribbons, then do so. Now, I have my glue on the front. I'm going to take my first ribbon. I'm going to lay it on here centered like this. So notice I don't have the edge of the ribbon up here. I want excess so I can go around behind. I'm going to fold it after I'm done with this. So I'm laying it flush on the sides. I'm going to grab it like this and I can pull it tight. Not so tight that I'm going to tear the ribbon. But I'm just trying to keep it very, very straight. Once you have your ribbons placed on, try to check and make sure that they're centered by tucking it like this and like this. This will be where the middle is. Now, as long as there's nothing on, exposed on the sides and nothing exposed in the middle, you can turn it over and we're going to use the gel super glue and start gluing the back. When gluing the back, you want to apply a little bit of glue here and down inside here. You're going to utilize your micrometer to apply pressure. You don't want to glue the top because the glue will seep through the fabric. So here's what I do. I pull the ribbon tight. I'm applying downward pressure with my left hand. I'm pulling the ribbon tight. I'm ensuring that it's flush on the sides. And now I'm going to take my fingers like this and run my fingernails down like this, applying pressure on the ribbon. I want to try to keep it as even as I can and flush with the edges. Once you have it about where you want it at, 
you can take your micrometer and do the same thing. Now what's happening is the micrometer is applying pressure evenly across the ribbon. Now that you've glued this portion, just like I showed before, I'm going to apply a little bit of glue down inside here. This is right where the balsa wood meets with the bat metal backing. And when I do this, I'm not going all the way to the edge either. So I'm going to apply pressure by pulling on the ribbon with my left hand and then use my micrometer and push the ribbon into that corner. I'm going to hold that for about five to ten seconds and let the glue take hold. Now, sometimes the glue will seep through this ribbon. When this happens, carefully remove it. Don't just yank it off or you may undo the work you've done. Now I have the corner glued. Now I want to glue one, two, and three little dots. I'll show you what it looks like. One, two, three. It's not a lot, it's just a little bit. Now, same thing. Check my ribbon. Make sure I line it up as best I can. Place my micrometer and apply pressure. Now I have this excess material that's not needed. I want to use my high quality scissors that are not going to tear the fabric. So I can come back, I can fold it over if I want to, I can make a crease in it. You can use a razor blade, but it does not work as well. See the fraying here? See how there's no fraying here? That's because I use quality scissors. Now I know in some of our other videos, when I've talked about burning strings and things, do not use a lighter during this process at any time. It's not needed. So now I'm going to repeat the same process on the other side. All right, now I've completed the other side. When I talked about making this cut, it doesn't have to be exact. I like to leave some metal surface open back here for a uh, part that I'm going to show you later. Now, what we need to do is work on moving this material up here and make some folds. Now, what I like to do first is pull it up like this and make a fold. Pull it up like this and make a fold. So I'm just making a little crease down here with my fingers. Now I'm going to flip it around, and this is what the front will look like. So the corners are easy to do. On the corners, you're just going to fold it like this. But before you start gluing, you need to check the other corner as well. So when doing this, you're going to look at this position right here. It's kind of hard to hold, but I'm going to try to show you. So. Here is a corner and here's a corner. These are the cuts I made earlier in the video. What I'm trying to do is ensure that, for example, these two white stripes right here are even and one is not closer to this corner than the other. You can also use the red stripes for this as well. So that's pretty close. This side is very, very close, but this side is towards the center a little bit. To adjust that, you will pull up slightly on the ribbon and try to shift it in small amounts. When you do this, you have to be careful not to make ripples or to pull the ribbon in a way that it makes it all wavy from left to right. You want to have nice straight lines on all of these lines, the yellow, the red, and the white lines. Okay? So, I pre-fold everything to check it. I press it down with my hand. That's pretty close. So now, on the back, the first thing that I'm going to do, is once I've centered everything, 
Let's make a glue dot right here. On this part, you have to be careful when pulling your ribbon tight because you're pulling against a sharp metal edge and it can cut and tear it. When you pull it up, make sure it's lined up with everything. Use your micrometer, apply pressure, and hold it down. I don't know if you can see this on screen, but this is the reason why you don't want to glue near the edge. I didn't go over the edge, but I put my glue dot here, and when I applied pressure, the glue seeped through the ribbon. So be careful when you're doing this and take your time. Now, I don't need this excess material. I'm just going to snip it off. Now, I've cut off my material, I'm going to take and apply a little bit of tension pulling up like this and folding this over and holding it down and making a crease. You can also use your micrometer to do this. I haven't applied any glue at this time. What I'm trying to do is just pre-fold everything so that it helps work with me. It also helps me see where I need to put my glue at. Alright, so now I'm going to put a dot right here, it's not near the edge, it's on the inside and that's to help hold this excess material down. All of these points that I'm gluing, don't skip them, it helps keep the structural integrity of the metals rack held together. Repeat the same process over here. Remember, I'm not using a lot, I'm just using a little bit of glue. Now this is secured. So I'm going to take my little pre-folded corner here, come across, and I'm going to see where I need to put my glue at. So it's in line with this red line right here. So when I make my glue spot, I want to put it about right here. You don't want it down inside the fold deep down in there because what's going to happen is it's going to bleed through on the front and then you're going to have to start this process all over again. Now, what I'm going to do is pinch the fabric between the micrometer and my thumb, pull up on it slightly, and rotate it over onto that glue mark and apply pressure. Same thing as before, I have my pre-folded section, I'm going to fold it over, I'm going to check to see where my glue mark needs to be. Put a small dot of glue. I'm going to take my micrometer and my thumb and pinch the fabric in between my thumb and the micrometer, pull up slightly, and rotate the fabric over evenly, and apply pressure. Now I'm going to repeat the same process on this side. Remember to pre-fold your corners and check them. Now, I'm going to find out where my glue dot needs to be, which is near the corner of this material, but not down inside the fold. Take the micrometer, pinch my thumb and the micrometer together, holding the material, pull it tight, and roll it over. When you're done, your product should look something like this on the back. If you have any excess strings or things like that, 
You can use your scissors and just snip it away. You can go back to the front and check. Make sure you didn't get any super glue or anything on the front of your metals rack. This is something like what it should look like. Now, I'm going to demonstrate how to apply this piece to the back of your metals rack. This is what holds your metals onto the ribbons. So, if you make the one and a half inch by eighth of an inch wide strips like this and you don't use the carter pins, what you want to do is find the middle, and you can just eyeball it, it doesn't have to be precise. You want to find the middle. You want to fold it like this until the ends touch each other. Then from there, start to squeeze and pinch the metal down. Now what you will create is a loop on the end. But what you need is one side to be flush and one side to not be flush. So typically take your thumb, apply pressure on the table like this, and squish it down nice and flat. What will happen is one side will be nice and flat and this side will be curved like this. It may be hard to see, but this is what it looks like. Now, what I'm going to do is glue this on the back of my metals rag. But before I apply the glue, I need to get my metal. This is the metal that you were issued. All you need to do is just cut this material and get rid of it. So now I'm going to take my metal and it has a ring on the top. On this ring, try to make sure there's not a gap at the top of it. Try to close and pinch it together. So on this one, this is the National Defense and the eagle faces out. On the back side, it'll look like this. So all you need to do slide this down all the way to the end just like this and when worn the break in this ring should be hidden up inside here now take it and place it on your metal rack what you want to do is center this ring use the ribbon to cut the ring in half this way by centering it up and down also, it needs to be centered, for example, on this one, on the yellow stripe. So I don't need it to be this way or this way. I don't need it to be this high, and I don't want it to be down here like this. I want the ribbon to be halfway through, running this way, right here, hiding half of the ring. Then, this direction, I need to make sure that this metal is centered left to right. Once I have that information, all I have to do is apply super glue behind this, and that's it. Apply the super glue to the metal portion, not the ribbon. Once you've glued this on, all you have to do to remove your metal is take it and find that break in the ring and simply twist, easily twist it like this. It'll slide right out. Now, the final step to fixing this on here is to use a hot glue gun. All right, so this is a technique that I use and what this does is it creates a wider surface to secure this on the back of your metals rack. What you want to do is take your hot glue gun, once it's fully heated up and you have a glue stick in it, apply glue at the upper portion, just like this. As soon as you apply the glue, set your glue gun down and you're going to blow on it. Because the glue is hot, whenever you blow on it, it will flatten out.
So that's all I use, not very much. Now you can see that it's probably the size of a dime. I put a little too much on there maybe for this one, but not too much either. You don't want to build it up and have it real thick and big. It's not necessary. You just want to put a little bit of hot glue on here, and then as soon as you apply it, just blow on it, it'll flatten it out. This helps in keeping your metals from falling off. Now, to use the Carter pin method, same thing, just apply it through, close your ring, find out where it needs to be, center it left to right and up and down, cutting this ring in half. Now you can also apply hot glue, or sorry, you can also apply super glue to the back of this to hold it in place. But the easier method for this is just simply use hot glue. Before the glue dries, Move the pin around and ensure that everything's still uh, centered left to right and up and down, cutting the ring in half. This is a little bit more tedious than this because when applying the hot glue, you can move the Carter pin around. The final step is putting this part on the very back. You don't want it to be too high or too low. Just center it up and down, left and right, and apply super glue. Remember, you do not want to apply super glue too close to the top or the edges. Make sure you allow time for the glue to cure. So this is what your final product should look like. You want to make sure all your lines all your stripes and lines on your ribbons are nice and straight. There's no waves. Your shiny part is on the outside with the V shaping up. When hanging freely, your metals, the rings, are half exposed on the bottoms and centered left and right. On the back, you have your backing and the prongs to hang your metals rack. Now, I'm going to get another metals rack and try to explain some about NCOs and officers that have larger metal racks than just these simple two metal racks. So when you have more than one row of ribbons, the backings will change. And what I mean by that is the balsa wood that's on the back. So for example, this is seven metals. So for the lowest rack, which will be closest to the bottom, on the back of this, there will not be any balsa wood. It's just flat. On the next row that will overlap this metals rack, you have the normal size balsa wood on your back. Then, for the third row, which is the seventh metal, you have a thicker balsa wood on the backing. I will go over this more when we get to the pinning class in the future series.